One of the most recognisable news presenters in the country, Nicholas Owen. After a lengthy stint in Fleet Street, he started his broadcasting career at the BBC as a North of England correspondent before joining ITN in the mid-80s, ultimately becoming one of the key faces of ITV News. In 1994, he covered the Royal Beat as royal correspondent for ITV News and played a major role covering the death and funeral of Diana, Princess of Wales. He's been a fixture on both ITV and The Beeb, as well as presenting for Channel 4 and Classic FM. Plus, he gave a brief but memorable turn on Strictly. Nicholas Owen, <laughs> welcome to Mark Dolan tonight. It's a pleasure, I think, I hope. It, you did the right thing on that show, Strictly. You did... You did one week and got out. Oh, well, of course. I mean, I didn't try to get out. I mean, let's, let's be clear about this. But uh, I was a bit relieved, I have to admit. And I'm not sure how I would have managed to, because uh, I still had the job, you know. I mean, I didn't sort of take time off from mm. ITN. They weren't like that. Uh, so, for, but, but, yeah, as you say, out I went the, the first round. Uh, but, you know, what a, what a wonderful experience. I still, do you know, I still can't really believe it happened. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I can't pretend to be a great fan of the show these days. I mean, my wife watches a bit of it, but not so much. Other people do. And they seem to think that I'm sort of a, an encyclopedia of knowledge about it, you know. And I'll tell you one curious thing about it. It's not just ladies who come up to me and say, oh, you were on the show and who was, who was your partner? Oh, yes, and all that. There's a lot of men who know absolutely yes, everything about 100%. it. Yes, 100%. It's curious. You might be one. Well, I am. I'm a fan of the show. I think it's a great programme. And it's old school, isn't it? It's one of the few shows that the whole family can sit around and watch. I did something a bit like Strictly. I did Let's Dance for Comic Relief. Oh, uh, yeah. And yeah, that was yeah. just, a, I think, it was a two-and-a-half-minute performance with, with two other comedians. Yeah. But the rehearsals are exhausting, aren't they? Uh, well, yes, for Strictly, they certainly were. Yeah. Uh, I rehearsed for about, I think it was about uh, about three weeks of quite intense rehearsals. Mm. And I'll tell you something, I have never been fitter in my life. Yeah. I mean, I started out yeah. being exhausted, as they all say, but after a while, wow, it really kicked in. Yes, did you find yourself doing that, that scene in the Full Monty where you're in the post office queue? Getting your, <laughs> getting your jive together. Uh, and by the way, what about the, what about the curse of Strictly? Was Mrs. Owen happy with your appearance on that oh, show? Oh, I, I think she was, absolutely, yes. My, my, was she uh, the one that voted you out? Yeah. <laughs> just to be on the safe side? Perhaps she would. I shall, when I get home after this, I will inquire. She's been a bit foxy about that now, I come to think. <laughs> no, no, I don't think she did. No, she was very happy. My partner was Nicole Cutler, mm. uh, who hasn't been on the show for a long time now. But she was at the time, Nicole, the world Latin American dance champion. And, of course, I was not, which is why well, there was listen, a slight mismatch. She, she had <laughs> pedigree on the dance floor. You yes. have pedigree in the TV studio. Well, I'm going to start with a really easy one. Do people still trust the news they're watching? Ah, that's a very, very good question, isn't it? Um, if I have a very quick answer to that, I think in the main they still do. Uh, the, the main channels, and I'll put GB News into it as well, uh, I think people... Trust overall, yes. Whether they're taking much notice of it is mm -hmm. another matter. And I'll tell you something else which I think is extremely important, and I get asked this question a lot, and I'm very honest about it. With the grim news that we've all had these last few years, starting back in 2008 with the financial crisis, we rolled along, we got Brexit was just a sort of shambles, whatever way you look at yeah. it, whichever way you 100%. voted for it. Then we had COVID. Now we have a war in Ukraine with all the nightmares of that. And a lot of people say to me, I oh, the news. And I say to them, don't watch too much straight news, if you like, sort yeah. of pure thing. It, it's depressing. Yeah, it, it can be very depressing. It can be bad for your mental health. And as an old yeah. news guy who loved the business and did it for so many years and did my very best to, to, to communicate it well, it, it pains me a bit to say that, but I think... it. it be careful. Yeah. Ration it a little bit. Ration it, and then you'll find you'll be a bit more selective, and I think trust comes with that. I think that's great advice, because you were there for the transition from news bulletins to 24-hour mm. rolling news. And as you say, too much of it ain't great for the mental health, which is why I try to keep the show light where possible. And also, if there's good news about, we'll, we'll discuss that as well. And I think we could do more of that. Um, you left school at 17 with, I think, five... five uh, O levels. That's right. That's all, yes, all you five. all you needed, right? Because yes, yes. you went straight to your local paper, the Surrey Mirror, before heading to Fleet Street for a decade. Uh, yes. How helpful was that background in print journalism once you made it onto TV? 
Oh, I think um, the great thing about local newspapers in those days, what a sad decline there's been in local newspapers, mm. local journalism, and that's very sad now, but um, it, it, it was absolutely vital. I, I, I learnt the craft, how to talk to people, how to get stories out of people, which is what journalism is all about. It's got to be about that. Uh, and, and it was all it, it instilled into me in those very, very early years. And then to go to Fleet Street at a time when the Fleet Street really mattered, when it were national newspapers really came counted for something. Uh, oh, it, it was absolutely marvellous. Transition to television, of course, technically, it was all very different, but the old journalistic values, the journalistic uh, things that have been drummed into me, they, they were there and, and, and it served me incredibly well. There are still newsreaders with pedigree on, on, on the BBC, on ITV, mm. and hopefully a couple here as well. Ooh, yes. But do you think there are too many newscasters now who don't have that journalistic integrity, that background, that pedigree, uh, and who are just looking at an auto cue? <laughs> Good. I hear that such a lot. Listen, the way it started, the way television news started, was actors were, were used to read the news. Uh, you know, there have been the viewers and listeners who may remember Richard Baker. Of course. Oh, I guess. People like that. Uh, Kenneth Kendall and so on, they had been actors. Mm. And they really did just sit in a studio, presented with a script, which hopefully they read beautifully. Uh, and that was the way it started. This, this idea of bringing journalism into it was really when ITN started in the 1955 uh, and insisted that people have a really good journalistic background. Do you know, I think most of the people who read the news and bring us the news, actually most of them have come up now through the, the modern media which might be radio, podcasting or whatever, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But no, no, I think the journalistic background is still there. Whether it's done really well, I think the problem is there's just so much of it. Mm. So there's so much airtime to fill. So there are people I see on the screen. I try not to be a grumpy old man about this. Oh, come on, be grumpy. <laughs> this is GB no, no, News. No, 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 I'm, not, I'm really not grumpy. But I, I, I sometimes think... Oh, ouch! You know, give me, give me half an hour with that person, and I could, I could, I could change that. Do you not think some of the bulletins elsewhere uh, infantilise the audience a little bit? Oh God! Uh, Trivialise oh. uh, and 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 sort of uh, simplify things as though the audience are thick. Well, do you know the? Uh, yes, um, uh, there was a broadcaster, uh, John Humphreys. Mm. I heard him say once, "What journalists do is, first of all, they simplify, then they exaggerate." And if you think about it, there's, there is a bit of that about journalism. Well, the problem uh, is it is a branch of showbiz, isn't it? Even well, though you're delivering the news to the audience, you're there to, I suppose, well, stimulate and You're explain. right, you're right, in that it, it, we're sitting in a television studio, mm. uh, we're surrounded by, um, you know, all, all the gizmos of, of showbiz, if, if you like. It yeah. is a show. That it, you've got, you're not, it's not entertainment, or it shouldn't be yeah. entertainment, strictly speaking. I yeah. know you managed to make it pretty entertaining. Occasionally, but of course, Polly does the heavy lifting at the top of yeah, the hour, yeah, yeah, and that's gotta, why our bulletins team is so important. Yeah, but what I was going to say was, it's got to look the part. Mm. There's no point of just sitting in a, as a box with nothing behind you, nothing around you. The modern world demands that uh, people's attention is drawn to what you're doing, so that's very, very important. But there's an awful lot of people out there. I, I, I tell you what I don't like... I'm not very keen on programmes where people just sort of giggle at each other mm. over and over again when, when they're doing sort of news, you know. Yeah. We can all pick programmes where we think about that. Uh, I'm, I'm not very keen on that. I think uh, keep the tone a little more serious when it's important to do so. Please, please. Should Hugh Edwards be back on TV reading the news? No. Why? Um, I just don't think... You, you, you talked about... It's not trust, is it? It's something else. Hugh had the most important job anchoring news programmes. Uh, I, I use an American expression there, anchor. You know, it, it, it is what it says, isn't it? You're there and you're solid and you're not yeah, going anywhere yeah, yeah, and this yeah. really matters. He had the most important job to do. He had the big commentaries on the big state occasions, all of mm. that. Um, when he got embroiled with what he fell into, for whatever reason, and we still don't know the facts of this, let's be clear, there's terrible way people condemn other people 100%. without knowledge. And but, no evidence of illegality well, either. Exactly. Um, but I do think that Hugh himself, I think if I was sitting here with Hugh, he and I were chatting away, he, he would agree with me that you can't go back, you can't just go back and sit 
you know, sit there in front of the camera and say, right, here I am, this is most important. Just don't, don't think it's on. Nicholas, um, we're out of time. I know you're enjoying oh, your semi-retirement, well. but, but <laughs> would you take a gig here? We'd love to have you. I know you've done presenting on the channel. I have, yes. Yeah. Well, you know, you, well, they've got could, you, could you open your calendar to a few more appearances? <laughs> I, I, my, my, uh, the, the, they've got my phone number here. I, I get I, you know, Sometimes the phone goes in the middle of the night. <laughs> That's probably GB News. I'd love to do more. Well, there you go. Is, is this a job application? Well, it most certainly is.